Welcome to another Monday Blitz. Thank you for spending a few moments of your time with me as we explore another chapter in the book of Matthew. Today we're looking at Matthew 14, and particularly one part of the story, a fascinating piece of the story that I hope uh, causes you to consider your own uh, reliance on God, trust in God, and where you can maybe even grow in that experience. The story comes of Jesus hearing of John the Baptist being beheaded. The disciples are concerned about what the outcome would be for their lives, and we see Jesus pulling them aside to a solitary place. But unfortunately for them, the hope of spending time refocusing and renewing their spirits is quickly uh, interrupted by thousands of people coming to hear Jesus speak and Jesus working the miraculous feeding of the 5,000. And then we have the beginning of where I want to jump in with you guys today just for a few moments. We have this story of the disciples traveling across the sea, the Sea of Galilee most likely. And as they're traveling across the sea, they are alone. Jesus has stayed behind with the crowd and the disciples are alone. And then in the middle of the night, they see an image walking across the water. And of course, the worst imagination, worst things they could think of come to mind. And then Jesus says, it is I. Don't be afraid. Peter being impulsive as Peter always is in the stories, uh, goes, well, if it's really you, Invite me to walk to you on the water. And Jesus says, come walk on the water to me. I've often thought about that as who in their right mind would even ask to walk on the water. And yet Peter in this impulsiveness shows a trust in Christ that is very, <laughs> a massive amount of trust it would seem to climb out of the boat onto the water. And yet it isn't until he is in the water, walking towards Jesus, that he realizes that he has left the safety of the boat. And in that moment, as he glances back to see that there is this great lack of safety, he has left everything he knows and can control. He is now in the water, in the middle of the lake, and he is walking on it. The passage says this, Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, came towards Jesus. But, a very important conjunction there, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. It is so easy for us to believe that we are saved when life is going good. If things are going well and we talk about salvation is secure and it's good and no, there is no problems. And then we have experiences we see in scripture like this one. Peter was safe and secure in the boat, and yet God never intended for him to necessarily stay in the boat. He intended him to realize where his salvation came from, was not being in the boat where Peter was in control. But salvation is truly when we fully surrender control to God. And when Peter got out of the boat and looked around, he suddenly realized he was out of of control. He had no control of the situation. He had to rely completely, fully on Jesus to save him, to keep him alive. And sometimes I think we get lost. I know I get lost in the thinking that Jesus saved me, past tense, and now that I'm saved, I'm good to go and take care of myself. And here we see this powerful picture that salvation is not just a one-time event that's in the past, but salvation continues. Christ continues to save and to keep me saved going forward. There isn't this period of time where I, have sa I am saved and now I continue to keep myself saved. Rather, Christ continues to save. In fact, this is Jesus' response. You of little faith, why did you doubt? You see, Peter started to question as he was out in that water and he saw the wind, he saw the waves, he saw the distance from the boat. He began going, I can't get back to the boat if I start to sink. I can't save myself. Well, he's already been saved. He's walking on the water. 
Why would he sink? Except that he stepped away from God. He stepped away from the salvation. And in that moment when he realized that he could not walk on the water on his own, he couldn't keep himself up, and yet he thought he would try. In that moment, he begins to sink. And he calls out to Jesus, save me. Now, he needed just as much saving when he was in the boat as when he was in the water. The difference was, it was only when he got in the water that he realized how desperately he needed the continual salvation from God, the continual grace, the continual recovery effort that Jesus was offering. So as you look at this scripture, hopefully today and this coming week, think about where you still are relying on yourself where Jesus is offering his salvation and you still are looking at how you can save yourself. What is it in your life that you must, you, you must just let him have? I don't know what it may be. I know in my life I have plenty of places where I'm still looking back at the boat of how can I get back in that safe place where I'm in control. Forgetting that Jesus has offered so much, much more. So much. He wants to save us, not just past, but continually save us from the things we are going to run into, the challenges, the problems of this life, the, the discomforts. He is here to save us and transform us, and it's only He who can. And yes, we have to get out of the boat of our own self-sufficiency to realize sometimes that we need saving. Each one of us does, continually, every day. God bless. Take care. Until next time.